Hello everybody, my name is Nihil and today I am here for you with a three-part video actually. It's going to be a little bit of a big project here. And we're going to talk about how to bring custom assets into your map to give it that little bit of, you know, uh, unique feel and, and, and really cool visuals that you know, your players have never seen before in another map. And this is going to be a three-part video. So the first video, this video right here, is going to talk about textures, how to bring your own textures into your map. The second video is going to be about the same thing, but going to be talking about models, okay, so props. And the third video is going to tell you how to actually pack all that extra data into your BSP so that your players will actually be able to play it um, just out of the box. And I'll talk more about this uh, when the time is right for that topic. But let us go ahead without further ado. Um, let's talk about today's topic, which is how to actually get your own custom images or textures into your map and into Hammer and into the game ultimately. Um, so for that, I've picked some uh, some example textures here. And uh, the link for this is, of course, in the video description. But you can also choose to just go ahead and hunt for your own stuff. And I found this medieval brick material. Now it's a zip file um, and it consists of a bunch of different files. So let me show you the folders that we're going to work in. I've set this up in a side by side here and um, on the left side we have what I call my work folder. Um, that is in, on my hard drive uh, on my E drive I've got a CSGO maps folder which is where I do all my mapping in. And in there, I've got a folder for every map. And this map, of course, is called DE Tutorial. And uh, you'll recognize this. This is just the map files that we're using from instancing from the last video. And in here, I have an empty props folder at the top. And I have a textures folder that I also made. And in the textures folder, of course, the props folder is going to be the topic for next video, but in the textures folder, I have a folder for every custom texture, and this one is called brick wall. So what I've done is I've downloaded the zip file, and I've simply dragged the textures that I want to use from that zip file into this folder. And in here, so I have two PNG files, just regular images. We have uh, a stone texture and we have what's called a normal map. And I won't go into specifics uh, about normal maps. You can look that up. Um, it's an interesting topic, but basically they give you more lighting information and more detail, but you don't have to use them. On the right side, we have another folder, the second folder we're going to have to work with today, and that is just your average CSGO folder. So this is on my SSD, um, on my program files, Steam, Steam Apps Common, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, CSGO. So you know, CSGO right here. And then you have a folder called materials to so go into there. And we're going to talk about this in a second. For now, we're in the work folder. So right here, we've got our two textures. Now, what is the workflow? Well, I've set up a paint document here to show you really quickly what the workflow is like. So we start out with, say, a PNG file. This could be absolutely any image file. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through a process called conversion. So I'll just spell that out for you. Conversion. We're going to convert it. And out comes what's called a VTF, stands for Valve Texture Format or Valve Texture File. And that is what the source engine and what Hammer can understand. Okay, so that's what we are going to have to do. Now, in addition, later on, we're also going to use a text editor, any text editor. And I'll give you an example here in just a second. I'm going to create a text file which is called the VMT, which is the Valve Material Type. And uh, that's going to just define a couple of parameters about the texture. Um, but we are going to talk about that more in more detail in just a second. But let's get back to our left side here. And let's take our PNG and convert it into a VTF. Now, for that step, there's a lot of different ways. There is a program called VTF Edit uh, right here. And all you need to do here is file import. And then you select your brick wall texture. And um, there's a bunch of options here. I'm not going to go through them at this point. For now, um, this would actually be all right. 
and you can hit OK. And it will actually be uh, right here. There's options you can click on right here, but generally you won't need them for this. And you can just hit uh, save as and you can save out the VTF just this way um, and it, it works. That's your conversion done. Um, but there's also different options. We've got um, GIMP right here. Um, and uh, in GIMP, what you can do is you can download a, uh, a plugin as well that does this for you. So you just hit export image and down here it'll say valve texture format VTF. Um, what I'm going to be using though is Photoshop and that also comes with a plugin. A link to both of the GIMP, and which is free, and the Photoshop, which is expensive, maybe, depending on if you're a student or not. Um, I will post a link to those plugins, and I'll also post a link to VTF Edit, which is also free. So in Photoshop, you know, what we can do is we can go ahead and we can take, for example, our brick wall here and just bring it into Photoshop and then simply say file, um, save as actually and then if you have installed the uh the, the plugin correctly uh it'll say vtf down here and we can save it out as a vtf so let's do that right now and it will come up with this options dialog and this looks a little bit different every time but in this version uh, in photoshop you've got what's called templates and that's really useful because we just select the compressed texture template and that sets everything up all right and we just hit okay and it'll take a second and once that is done, we will have our little VTF right here next to the other file. So let us repeat that procedure with a normal file. This is the normal map. Let us go to File, Save As, and again, select VTF and just hit Save. Now this time, compressed texture was for the for the other, for the real texture, basically. And um, this time, this is a normal map. So we're gonna hit Normal Map and just hit OK. Okay, this will actually create our normal map. Um, when it comes to textures, um, by the way, they need to be uh, have a correct size of a power of two. So you should use 256 by 256, 512 by 512, or 1024 by 1024. That's what I would suggest. Don't go over that, don't go under that. Um, and you can combine those. You could do a 128 by 256 or 256 by 512 or 512 by 1024 or something like that. But it has to be that, otherwise you will get an error from your exporter. Anyways, you will have your VTF and your normal map VTF now. So now it's time to bring those into the um, into the engine basically. And with the way we do this is in our right side here of the folder. So that's our CSGO folder materials. We will create a new folder um, which is called whatever our map is called. So DE tutorial. Okay. We can go in there and then we can just take these two and bring them in. You can actually delete these. You can leave them in here. It doesn't really matter. So now we have basically put them into our copy of the game, if you want to think of it that way. Our version of Counter-Strike now knows these textures. Now, we still need uh, the other process. Remember, if we were in, uh, in uh, Paint, uh, this side is still missing. We've taken our PNG, we've converted it, and we've uh, basically placed the VTF in the right spot. But we still need to use a text editor to make a VMT file. So let us go ahead and do that. So the way to do this is very simple. Just right click, new, and you can say text document. And we will call this one brick wall, just like the texture, but you can call it anything you want, really. And uh, it's a TXT file, which means we can open this. And I open it in Notepad2. You can use standard Microsoft Notepad or any other text editor that you like. Let me just copy and paste um, something in here that I have prepared. Um, and you will find this also in the video description, so you can just copy and paste it in there as well. Um, I'm not going to go through everything in here, but the idea is that um, here we give uh, the folder of, uh, of and, and the file name of our main texture. This is what's called the diffuse map. That is this file. And uh, when we give that file name, we make sure that we include the folder. So imagine you were in this spot in CSGO materials. And from here, you needed to go to DE tutorial and then brick wall. And you don't need to put the VTF that's already uh, assumed. 
And we also use a normal map or bump map, as the source engine calls it incorrectly, I might add. And that's under DE tutorial slash brick wall norm. So basically, we've just supplied this VMT file with the, ne with the texture file names of our two textures. If you didn't have a normal map, you wouldn't have this brick wall norm VTF. All you'd need to do is just delete everything in the middle. Okay, and th this will be a just fine uh, texture. It just won't have the additional effect of the normal map. So that's how you do that. Um, and then here is a bunch of options um, that you can read up on and you can find out on the wiki as well, or you just copy and paste them. Um, it, what's interesting here, I mean, this is pretty standard stuff. What's interesting here is you've got some saturation, contrast, and even a color tint option. So we're giving this a bluish tint and you can play around with this and just see what looks best. What's also interesting is the surface prop metal parameter. So what this tells the source engine is what kind of um, material are we looking at? And right here I've set this to metal, which is maybe not the best idea for a brick wall, but you can play around with this. You could set this to glass. What does that mean? Well, it means if you walk on it, it will sound like glass. So make sure this is set to the correct type, but that's pretty much it. So save this, close out, and what you wanna do is you wanna just hit F2 or rename and then just put VMT instead of TXT. And you might need to enable file extensions in Windows if you don't see those file extensions, which is something you should always enable anyways. It will ask you, are you sure? Yes. And if you want to change this now, see, I've already associated VMT files with Notepad. But if you want to change this, just hit right click, open with, and it will give you the chance to open this with whatever program. So pick a text editor, hit OK, and it will just open it up right back up again. And that way you can always modify it. That is pretty much all you need to do. If you already have Hammer running, you need to close it, you need to restart it. I don't, so let us go ahead and actually start Hammer here and check out our new cool material. There we go. And I am going to open up um, the garden. Um, and so to test this out, I will make a little nice little block here. We'll make it 128 by 128. And we'll put that in. I'll center it here, sort of in the air, that's good. And we will go ahead and we will browse for textures and I'm gonna put in brick. Um, and now we just need to find our texture because it turns out there's a lot of brick textures. <laughs> and there it is, DE tutorial slash brick wall. This is our custom texture. So let us apply that. Um, now about texture scale. Um, so for 128 by 128 by 128 block, which is what I've made this, right? Um, if the texture scale is one fourth of that, you need to multiply that by four. Okay, so that's 512 by 512. But I know for a fact that I made the texture 1024 by 1024. So that means I need to set this texture scale to 1 to 5. Okay, it's just simple math. Um, so this way it will fit right on. And, uh, and that's pretty cool. I can just center this to make it auto align in this case. And you can already see this is sort of a bump map effect. And, and uh, well, actually that's just a cube map reflection right here. But in the game, you'll also note the bump mapping that factors into that reflection. You can see here how it's reflecting the skybox, which is, you know, not realistic for the surface at all. I mean, stone doesn't do this. This is kind of a wet look and this doesn't work like that. But in game, it will look a little bit better. Um, and, and of course, it's up to your discretion as to where you want to use what effect. So um, yeah, you can just literally compile this and I'll show you what this looks like in the game. All right, and we are in the game, in our map and around this corner, there's our custom texture block. Yay! Anyways, um, one thing that doesn't work, of course, is the cube maps, the reflection. So this is just the diffuse map, just the, 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 the standard map that we downloaded. Of course, if we want to have that work, we need to do build cube maps in the console, which will quickly go through all the env cube map entities that I've set in the map, and it will calculate all the information. And we can rejoin and go ahead and take a look now. And now we can see if we look at it here, right there, 
if I jump, you can see it. If I stand right here, you can also see it. This is the normal map affecting the surface, um, you know, given an interesting effect. I don't know if you like this. Um, don't overuse this, but it is, you know, it's, it's a neat effect to have in your repertoire and uh, be able to just use this on the right surfaces. It looks pretty damn good sometimes. So that is everything for this part of the video. Now, if you use textures, um, make sure to watch the rest of the videos that I make in this series. The second video now is going to talk about models. It's a bit more complicated. And the third video is about packing all this information into your actual BSP file. Because right now, what we've done to our um, CSGO slash materials folder obviously just happened on our end. Our version of that software has that information, this texture, the VMT, the VTF. But the other people out there on the internet, they're not going to have that. And that won't work. This will not run on their end in that case. So what you need to do is you need to take this information and pack it into the BSP file that CSGO automatically downloads. And that way, everybody has it. That's how you solve that problem. And I will show you in the third video how to do that. But for now, you can use this and just make the map look beautiful that you're working on on your end. And once you're done with everything, you can watch my third video and you can pack all that information into your BSP and everybody will get to see your beautiful custom textures and maybe your custom uh, props, your models. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for part two and ultimately part three of this series. Until next time, my name has been Nihil and bye bye.